Hey everybody, I wanted to go through this process with you today. Um, several people have asked me about it and I think that it would be uh, useful to have a video on it because there's a couple of little details about how to get your video reference into Maya um, so we can sort of scrub in the timeline and see that in real time. Um, so I'm going to take you through the whole process of how I, how I do that. So um, first I'm just going to pull a, a movie file into Premiere. Hold on, that worked. Uh, we gotta put it in the project window now. Um, let's go back to that. Um, it is there we go. So I'm just gonna drag a file into Maya, right? so that imports it in. Now, here's where this, <laughs> from the very beginning, starts getting a little confusing. Is it's it's a lot to do with frame rate, right? Um, so I'm not going to change anything on this video's frame rate, right? Um, I want it to play back sort of the normal rate, but if I am animating in 24 frames per second, I need to export it out as if it were not 30 frames per second or 29.97. So if I'm animating for film, I, I need this final video reference to be um, sort of sampled at the rate of 24 frames per second. If I'm doing it for um, games or something TV where it's 30 frames per second, then this is fine. So what I'm going to do is just drag that straight into here. And I want this to play back in real time. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my audio just so it doesn't play back through the video. So I just unlinked that and deleted the audio because I don't necessarily need the audio. This is just a gesture, right? So you can see my messy office. Let's say that the, the clip I need is this gesture here. That, uh, I don't know. Right? So it's sort of a I don't know gesture. Um, okay, so I'm going to sort of edit it down to that, right, and put this at the beginning. And so now my entire video is just that sequence, right? Um, and I got that from this MOV, and when I dragged it into my um, editing area here, it created a sequence, this, this sequence here, that is the same frame rate, okay? So that's fine. Um, the next step is getting it out of here in a format that I can import that into um, Maya. Now, there is an option to import in a video into Maya um, as a background. I, I have issues with that. I have, I have problems getting that to work um, smoothly and uh, you know, I get some glitches. So what I'm going to do is file, export media. And I'm going to export this out as a bunch of still images. Okay. So right now, in my export settings, it just by default I'm going to be set to H.264, which is one of the best ways to export out. And you realize it's going to make an MP4 file. Right? I don't need an MP4 file. I need a series of JPEGs. Okay. So when I do this, it will now export it out as a, a sequence right, of .jpeg files. So frame one will be whatever the name is you know, dot zero one or something like that. Um, I'm gonna change this name just so I know what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and just put this in a, a temporary folder on my desktop. Let's go to my desktop, new folder, blah. We'll put it in there and we'll call this something without a number in it. So we'll call this um, test, right? And I hit save, okay. So now what it's going to make is for frame one of this animation, it'll be a JPEG that is like test 01, you know, test 02, test 03 for each frame, right? Now, here's where it gets a little um, confusing, is that right now it's going to export this sequence as if it were um, 29.97 um, frames per second, right? If I'm animating in 24 frames per second in Maya, because it's going to film or, or something that's at 24 frames per second, then I need to change this. Um, if I'm doing it for games, it's okay, but I can click on this and right now 29.97, well, I mean, I can change that to 24, right? Um, Maya by default is at 24, so if you're just animating as a, as a practice, like a, just a, a test piece, um, then 24 frames per second is fine. But again, if you're going for games, you're gonna want it at 29.97 or 30, just because that's um, some variation of that frame rate is what games usually work as. So once we've got this, whenever I hit export, it's going to just kick out a sequence of JPEGs. 
And once it's done, I'll show you that sequence. So you'll see that in my blah folder, you know, test 01, you know, it actually starts at zero. Um, and there's just an image for every frame of this animation. If I go through here and click through it, you'll see, you know, one frame at a time, we're getting every frame, right? So that's what we wanted. Now we go into Maya. Now there's two options on how we can do this. Um, there's kind of the hard one, there's the easy one. Um, I want to show you both because they both have you know, some, some benefit. Um, so the hard one is to create a plane that is the same shape. Right? Now if we're already in Premiere, we can see what that shape is um, just by seeing what our resolution is here, right? It's, it's 1280 by 720, right? So I need some variation of that, 12.8 by 7.2 or 128 by 72, like some, some version of that that makes sense. I'm going to create a plane to that, resol or to that resolution. Okay, so if I'm in 3D space here, um, let's do 128 and then 72. Let's try that, right? So that's way bigger than I, I needed. Um, but I can always just scale it down and keep it in the correct proportion, even if these numbers don't make sense anymore. The biggest thing is I just needed to get it in that shape. Right? Once I have it in that shape, any material will work. I usually use the simplest one I can. I just assign a new material, right? and I just plop a Lambert on there, um, just so I can have a new material that's dedicated to this. Right? Now under our color, I'm gonna click this Op or this little checkerboard out here and it's going to give us the option to create a node and we're just going to map in a file right? and this is where we're going to point a little folder it keeps popping it up on the other screen do you understand when I click this little folder this is where I point to my reference video now again if you are um, if you're doing this as a uh, a Maya project you probably want to put your reference inside of your um, inside of your Maya project as well. And the biggest reason for that is because this path right now for this reference video is C users, Marlowe G, desktop, blah, right? Um, but if I go to work on another computer, or if I give this to a friend, they may not have that path. In fact, their computer name is probably something different. And so it'll lose the path to this. And so that's why um, we usually put that inside of the Maya project. That way when you set your project, it knows the local um, location of this. So um, that's just a, a note on setting your pro, uh, project. But if I click this first image, basically what it's going to have is now the texture on this plane is that first image, right? And if I scrub my timeline, nothing changes. It's just as if I textured this object with a picture of me, right? Um, but if I click this use image sequence, what's going to happen is Maya is going to tie that frame number. See, this says test and then this you know, that thing frame, right? It's going to tie that to the frame of animation I have here. And now when I scrub, that will update, okay? So when I'm on frame 30, it's looking at test 030, right? Um, so this is, um, this, is, this is how we get the, um, the video inside of Maya to where we can scrub and see that in real time, right? Now the cool thing about this is now I can place this reference wherever I want it, right? If I have this animation happening with my character, I can you know, put it up here in the top corner and use this as reference as I'm setting my keyframes, right? Um, now, I'm gonna show you a slightly faster version of this. Um, I, I, I don't know, like, um, this is the method I have a tendency to use, but it's just because I've been doing this for a little while. Um, there's another option that works really well, but it really works best in um, an orthographic view. So if I go to one of my orthographic views, like my front view, I can bring in an image plane too. So that's this button here. Right? Now an image plane is a, a, a special kind of object, right? It will, um, actually let me, let me go back and, and show you something in that previous one we had. Um, the difference with this is that if I hit four, I can see this in wireframe, five, it's shaded. I don't see the texture on it until I hit six, right? Until I'm in shaded mode, right? Um, 
so let me kind of I'll, I'll leave this in here and then I'll show you this with the image plane so the image plane option we have to do it in an orthographic view if we do it in a perspective view it will stay locked to the orientation of the camera that may be something you want currently I just want to place it somewhere in my scene so I'll go to my front view and click this button and when I do it pops up the option just to choose an image right? and so I can choose test 000 right and this is a different kind of file but or a different kind of node but you will notice that it also has the use image sequence right? and so if I click that it will do the same thing right? um, the interesting thing about the image plane I can move it around I can scale it around um, the cool thing about the image plane is that it doesn't do what um, we were showing a minute ago like if I hit 4 in here the image plane always shows up right if I hit 5 I still get this but the image plane is still this and that means if I have a model in here that I'm animating right and I need to you know go to um, wireframe mode so I can see like a, you know, a control that's hidden inside of something I still get to keep my reference image up here right? so the image plane works pretty nice um, I I don't necessarily like have a have a preference I, I do both I have a tendency to do this one and then after I've gotten that made I always go oh crap why didn't I use the image plane that was easier um, and that's just uh, you know force of habit I've been doing that for too long um, both of these will work um, and uh, should give you a good a, a good result now the cool thing about this is um, if you have multiple pieces of reference you can you can you, know, you can put this all over the place right let's say you're doing a run cycle and you have four different run cycle references well you can just have multiple you know multiple things just sort of lined up here for your for your um, reference video and you can see them all in real time as you um, as you are working um, this is really good for getting timing too because as you see it's playing back in the I don't know, my playback speed to real time it should be playing back pretty much in the the, the correct timing right all right I um, hope that makes sense um, let me know if you have any questions and I will talk to you soon